everybody. This is Zena Awesome. So I got back from the hospital last night. Um, they would have kept me a day longer if I had wanted to stay. Um, I really wasn't feeling too well yesterday. I, I was actually over what I went to the hospital for. So even though I didn't feel well, I didn't feel well because of the um, testing they did. So Again, to be clear, um, I just said that um, I was in the hospital with a small bowel obstruction and I realized that some people might not realize what that means. What that means is basically that I got food stuck in my small intestine and it was blocked. Fortunately, it was only partially blocked, but it was still blocked. And that was caused because of the previous surgeries I've had. had that the intestines have areas where they're more narrow. So basically I had a plumbing problem. And what happens is that once your intestines get blocked, then the pressure builds up and often it can cause vomiting and, and other problems like that. But also as the pressure builds up and it puts pressure on the inside of the intestine, it can cause blood flow in the intestine to stop from the pressure of the stuff inside, you know, because if it's just jamming, making the, you know, like a log jam in there and it's pushing it. And for me, this is my small intestine, not my large intestine. Some people can have this problem with their large intestine too. But for me, it's my small intestine. And there's actually nothing they can do for it except surgically go in and take it out. So it's one of the reasons I hate going to the hospital if I have this problem is all they're going to do is wait and see. So they're going to put you on IV fluids. They're not going to allow you to eat or drink anything. If you have um, a lot of fluid above the obstruction, because your intestines are really long, and although mine are a little shorter, they're still relatively long. So you have many feet. A normal intestine is like 25 feet long. Mine are a little shorter. I shouldn't have the problems I have at the length I have, but I do. So maybe I have diminished blood flow or other problems that make my intestines not work as well. But So you can have all that stuff build up in there. And so what they'll do is they'll put a tube down your nose and into your stomach to allow a way for all those fluids and everything to come out and release pressure. I've actually never had that done, so I've been lucky, well, lucky along those lines, but I've heard that um, if you're having a lot of pressure, you actually, in the instance, it actually is a good thing because it makes you feel better. So there's... It's always, you're always supposed to go to the emergency room. It's considered a 911 emergency if you have a small bowel obstruction. Because if the intestine starts to die or if the intestine bursts, then you can, you can die. You know, because sepsis, you know, the stuff from inside your gut is not supposed to be inside your body, outside your gut, right? And so you can die from it. So it's it's considered very major that it's an, it's an emergency room thing, pretty much without exception. And I've been technically very bad that I haven't gone to the emergency room. Because this has been my fourth obstruction this year. And this is the first time I went, and it was the most minor obstruction. And they still said that absolutely, I absolutely should have been there. It was an obstruction, and that I needed to be admitted, and that was the appropriate thing to do. So, it just, you got to understand the frustration, though. There's nothing they can do to fix it. And nope. now you're in the <coughs> hospital. I had my dogs with me, so they were in the van, so I'm having to run out and check on my dogs and take care of them. And then um, the first test they do is with a CT scan and contrast, 
and the contrast they give you is just makes you feel like it's short term though it makes you feel really weird it's it may it's really hot it feels hot and it feels hot in your body it's a strange feeling but then later they wanted to do an x-ray study and with the x-ray study you have to drink what drink contrast and drinking the the contrast as the, the one technician was saying has been around for like 50 years they've tried to make it taste good but there's nothing you can do to it to make it taste better really and I've learned from previous times that I've had these tests done that at least at the VA hospital their policy is that everybody that that works around that type of contrast that gives it to patients that they all themselves have to have tasted it themselves so they know what they're asking the patient to drink because um, even though I can tolerate it fairly well if you don't swallow it quite, quite right it does cause a gag reflex it's a very chemical flavor so it helps if you don't breathe through your nose at all while you're swallowing it and then you get less of the flavor but it's it is it's 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 pretty rough stuff that you have to drink and then um, there was twofold that they had me drink that. One is that it would help with the x-ray because it's it you know it, it glows under x-ray so they can see everything going through my system. And the other is that it causes fluids to go into the intestines, but that causes um, well at least for me has every single time really bad bad diarrhea, really bad diarrhea. If you've ever had a colonoscopy and taken all those type of drugs before your colonoscopy, it was worse than that. So, everything cleared, but I wasn't feeling well with all the, the diarrhea and everything, but um, I was able to eat, I was able to hold everything down, even though eating made me nauseous, but eating makes me nauseous anyway. So I came home yesterday, I'm still not feeling quite my normal perky self, but I'm doing a lot better. And it felt so much better to be at home with my dogs and be able to cuddle with my dogs. And then hospital beds aren't that comfy. And I'm a little bony, so the hospital beds are like like hard on my hips and my back and stuff. So they're just not, not that comfy. And then, of course, with um, the pandemic going on, there's nothing to do in the hospital. They don't... Um, any places for any congregating of course is all shut down all there's very few people in the hospital which was kind of nice in the fact that I didn't feel like I was going to catch anything and get sick but it did mean that there's literally nothing to do um, last time well last couple times I was in the hospital I went to the the hospital I go to the VA hospital I go to has long-term care and they have a day room where they do karaoke and bingo and movies and they just you know have all kinds of games and puzzle books and there's stuff to do and there's crafts and so there's something to go do well right now all that's all shut down even the I think the cafeteria was still open but you weren't allowed to eat in the cafeteria you know again no congregating there was no congregating in any of the waiting rooms and then in the in like the emergency room they had the seats all marked for social distancing so that nobody was sitting next to each other but I had like a whole big waiting room to myself I think the most I saw in the waiting room was three people and most of the time I was by myself um, I really enjoy um, really enjoy no hey I've been going to this VA hospital for over 20 years I think I started going in 98 and that's also where Vandar has been going and so a lot of the people know us there and um, so I met people that knew both of us and so um, I got a lot of people that you know when I told them you know Vandar's passed I got a lot of condolences and it was it was it was it's kind of nice that if you're gonna be sick and you're gonna go to the hospital that you're seeing people that know you and remember you um, this one nurse she's absolutely amazing um, I had actually had her in um, 2018 when I went in in October and we also had her when Vandar went in the hospital in May in 2018 
And she remembered, she remembered my dog, she remembered my dogs in the van and the cages. And like when Vandar was in the hospital, because I couldn't leave, and when we went there, we went there, um, we went there like straight from Cedar Breaks, I believe. Yeah, we'd gone straight from Cedar Breaks. So I'd driven from Utah right to the emergency room. So it was like a seven hour drive. And I needed some, you know, I raw feed my ch dogs. And so I needed some chicken. So I gave her some money and I asked her if she would buy some chicken for me. And she, she did, she bought chicken for me. But the really amazing thing is now in 2020, April of 2020, she remembered me, she remembered the dogs, she remembered my husband, and she remembered going out and, and buying the dog food, and then later when she came back, she said, the dog food, it was actually chicken, wasn't it? And I said, yes, it was. That was two years ago. You know, um, the phlebotomist, uh, phlebotomist is a person who draws blood. The phlebotomist came in, I have terrible, terrible veins. I've got bruises all over my arms from... Um, blood draws and IV and I have horrible veins there's nothing they can do about it so I don't get upset I just ask them to to be gentle <laughs> but that you know I understand that they got to get it in so I don't you know ever get upset or anything with them and she came in and I think it was kind of dark in the room and so I says oh I says I don't have good veins as this picky picky arm and she goes oh are you the are you the one um, with the husband? You know, I haven't seen you in a while. And I says yes. And I says, you know, unfortunately, he passed. And then she asked if I told one of the other people at the at the lab where they do the blood draws. And I said yes. I saw her and I told her. She says, well, she didn't mention it to me. I don't know if other people. But this this is the level of care that I get at the VA. So although I I don't like being a patient in the hospital because nobody likes being a patient in the hospital. At least when I'm in the hospital, I run into people that know us and remember us, and they're, they're all so kind, and um, even the people that clean the rooms and stuff are kind, because some of them I know too. So I see people, and um, it makes being in the hospital when you're not necessarily feeling well and having somebody you know and somebody um, saying nice things to you um, really helps you feel a bit better. So, um, again, I was really, um, although it's a pain, they're doing super control at the hospital I went to as far as control for the coronavirus. And, of course, I had to go in and out multiple times um, because of the dogs. So, you know, as I go out, I'm like, ah, you know, I'm an inpatient. I'm going out to the dogs. I says, I'll come back in. And that, you know, everyone was just really, really nice. It was, I mean, for a hospital experience, everyone was great. I really, really, um, even sometimes I would, they have, you know, in some areas, they actually have people like, I'm going to say, not guarding the doors. They're making sure that in like the ICU, they have a person posted outside to make sure that I guess the people that go in follow all the procedures and that they actually are authorized to go in. Because right now there's, there's no visitors and, um, you know, they're really not letting people in and they've turned down all, you know, um, just like everywhere that um, if it's a elective surgery or a surgery that can be put off, it has been. So the hospital is, is fairly empty in a lot of ways, but, you know, I'd walk by somebody and they'd, they'd say, hi, I'd talk a little and then I'd come back and then they'd actually still ask me, oh, well, how did it go? And you know, so people were really, really wonderful. So now I'm home. Um, I do have a follow appointment with the surgeon. Um, what he wants me to do for the next two weeks is do, as he said, a blenderized diet. So not only am I going to be doing FODMAP, low FODMAP, I'm going to be doing low FODMAP blenderized. Now, my way of preparing things is... Um, I know that I can only eat so much and now it's getting so complicated that I've gone ahead. I have um, these little, these are two ounce containers and I've actually had these two ounce containers since 2010. So I know these containers are 10 years old, but I bought a lot of them because they come in a big packet. It's from the restaurant store. These are for restaurants. 
And we used this after our gastric bypass to do all our food so I could do a bunch of cooking before our gastric bypass so I didn't have to do any cooking right after the gastric bypass, but all our food is prepped. So I decided to follow that same model right now while I'm on this blenderized diet. So this here is, is blenderized brown rice with cheese and butter. And it says rice on it so it won't get confused. This is chicken. I marinated, as I always have to do, I marinated my chicken in a, um, a lemon lime juice with um, red pepper, black pepper, and salt, and a little bit of oil to give it something, and then and baked it, and then ground it up, and in the ground, I added some more lemon juice, a little bit of soy sauce, and some more salt to give it a little bit of seasoning. So that's the chicken. And then, because you need to have some veggies, um, some green beans, these are just canned green beans, again, blenderized, ready to go. And then what I do is I'll, I popped these in the freezer so that when I'm ready to eat, they'll pop right out of this container because you don't really want to microwave inside plastic, you know, because that's not good to use plastic in the microwave. It puts the bad stuff in the food. So by putting them in the freezer, they'll just pop right out. I can put like three of them on a plate and voila, I have a meal because now I have like eight, eight, ten, depending on what they are. Um, and then on top of that, I already had some of this, so I'm going to use this for at least one meal a day. This is called Neocate Junior. It's an amino acid based, nutritionally complete powdered formula. Okay, what that means. That means it's, it's as it says, it's nutritionally complete. So unlike Ensure or any of those type of drinks that actually are not nutritionally complete, this is actually nutritionally complete. But one of the big differences with this is that the protein, it uses protein enzymes. So when I drink this, it's actually very chemical also, and I have to, I actually have a, a nose plug when I drink this. I found the nose plug or you know like for swimming works really good for drinking this that this is not digested the protein part is not digested the protein part is absorbed and so that way I'll be able to um, get part of my food this way and then I figure that doing the chicken and the rice and the green beans will probably cover me for the rest and then obviously I can, I still can maybe do some almonds, but I'd still have to grind them up. So I'm not too sure about that. And then, um, I want to still get, ah, oh, I can get this close enough. I still want to get my citrus. So, uh, this was a, a tangerine and a blood orange and another type of orange. So just three, and it was a little tangerine. So, and then I mixed it with quite a bit of water. So this is so I can get some, some fruit, and um, citrus is one of the fruits that's allowed. And then, as I says, I'm using lime and lime juice in my stuff. So I'm trying to get the varieties that I can with the limited amount of stuff that I can eat. I have a follow-up appointment on, I believe, the 15th of April with um, this new surgeon. This is the first time I've actually had a follow-up appointment like this about my obstructions. So I don't know if it's going to do any good or not, but I'll find out. Java, Java, cut it out, cut it out. So I'm not in the mood for telling a story yet today. I will do a story tomorrow, another, another story um, relating back to cars and stuff. So thank you for people that responded. Um, I hope I made things a little bit clearer. I am home, I am happy, my trip to the hospital was just fine, and no, had nothing to do with coronavirus, like I said, small bowel obstruction, and, uh, and we have barky dogs, they hear something outside, so everybody have a great day, thank you very much.